Hi, welcome to my channel. I will tell you story. The title is, Flight, Whip Whitaker, a commercial airline pilot, has a drug and alcohol problem, yet he has completed his flights safely so far. When a catastrophic mechanical failure sends his plane crashing toward the ground, his luck runs out. After an evening of drinking, using drugs, and having romance with one of his plane's flight attendants, Katerina Marquez, Whip Whitaker awakens. He answers a call from his ex-wife Deanna while still attempting to shake off his hangover when his phone rings. Whip refuses to talk about enrolling his son in a private school right now, saying he will do so when he returns to Atlanta, despite Deanna's desire to do so. Whip cannot calm down until he snorts a line of cocaine, while Katerina swiftly departs for the airport to get ready. Whip, who is wearing sunglasses, he immediately makes his way to the airport. Whip conducts a brief inspection of the aircraft before boarding it and introducing himself to his co-pilot Ken Evans and Margaret, a flight attendant. Makes Ken a bit uneasy, but he believes him when he says he is fine to fly. Whip accelerates the aircraft as it lifts off in the rain in an effort to find a gap in the clouds. Whip instructs Ken to inform flight control that they are slightly deviating from their scheduled course to avoid the weather as they fly through the weather system. But when Whip finds a gap in the storm, the aircraft settles and the passengers cheer. Shortly after takeoff, Whip personally apologizes to the guests for the bumpy flight while stealthily putting three mini vodka bottles into an orange juice bottle. Whip returns to the cockpit and takes a snooze after throwing the bottles in the trash and handing the controls to Ken. A prostitute named Nicole leaves a motel after spending the night with a client in a small Georgian town and uses her cell phone to call a drug dealer. She visits the man at his home where a pornographic movie is being made and purchases a tiny amount of heroin from him. He cautions her not to shoot too much because the film hasn't been trimmed properly. He also offers her a part in the movie, but she declines and walks away. She returns home to find her shady complex manager in her residence. The building manager, Fran, is found by Nicole in her flat holding her camera. He advances on her sexually as they dispute over her due rent. He is tricked out of Nicole's flat by her promise to return with the money after she takes a shower. She entices him outside before slamming the door in his face. She drops her bag on the ground and looks down to see a needle. She finds a hypodermic needle among her belongings, uses it to inject the narcotics she got from her connection, overdoses, and loses consciousness. Margaret is astounded by Whip's capacity for deep slumber and informs Ken that he would have to awaken Whip in order to get him ready for their landing. When the plane receives a severe shock and swings into an uncontrollable dive, both the steering wheels and the plane's hydraulic controls are non-responsive. Margaret instructs the travelers to fasten their seat belts. Whip, who is remarkably composed, ditches the plane's fuel and attempts a number of various emergency maneuvers to regain control of the aircraft. He instructs Evan to burn fuel. Evan is hesitant, but he obeys directions. Whip declares an emergency and directs them to the closest airport as they continue to dive without control. He asks Margaret to assist him and Ken in the cockpit and tells her son she loves him because of the flight recorder. Before Whip undertakes a risky maneuver, rolling the plane so they're flying inverted, they ask Market for assistance in getting to Whip's reverse pull handle. When the plane lurches dramatically, one of the stewardesses, Camilla, who had been helping some of the passengers, is knocked out cold. The plane rolls, pitching her onto the cabin ceiling. When the plane rolls over, a young boy slips out of his seat. Katerina unbuckles herself, picks him back up, and re-buckles him. Whip inverts the aircraft once more with Ken and Margaret's assistance, leveling it out, and then rolls it to crash land on its belly in a field close to a tiny church. The wing of the aircraft collides with the church's tower, ripping it off. The plane crashes down in an open field. Whip is knocked unconscious when the ground contact forces his head against the steering yoke. Whip regains consciousness only in time to witness Ken slumped over in his seat. A steel plate covering Katerina's skull indicates that she is dead. Passengers shout and scream. People show up to assist. Whip is removed from the aircraft. Passengers suffer severe injuries. Whip awakens in the hospital. With Charlie Anderson seated at his bed, he commends Whip for saving numerous lives. Whip has a concussion and other ailments but nothing serious. Two crew members and six others die. Two NTSB officers visit Whip. He learns that Camelia and Trina have passed away. Mr. Anderson represents the pilot's union and serves as the NTSB's point of contact. Margaret is doing fine, nothing serious. 
Due to brain injuries, the co-pilot is kept in a coma. Whip sobs. Whip calls Harling, friend of him, in need of clothing, cigarettes, and other items. Harling provides Whip with cigarettes and clothing. He adores how heroic Whip is. The press waits in front of the hotel. One evening, Whip enters a stairwell in search of a place to smoke. Whip finds Nicole after making his way to the fire stairs to smoke. They share a cigarette together. Nicole tells she's a heroin addict. She worked as a masseuse, photographer, and hairstylist in a salon. Later, a young man who is familiar with Whip joins them. Nicole lost her mother to cancer. She sobs. When Whip asks her where she lives, Nicole responds. Whip informs Nicole that he would like to see her after they are discharged from the hospital after Mark leaves, and she provides him with her address. When Whip is eventually freed, Harling takes him out the back door to avoid being seen by the media outside the hospital. Whip asks Harling to take him to his father's old farmhouse in the country, where a small Cessna is kept in a neighboring garage, knowing that the media have descended on his home. Whip searches the entire house for the alcohol that is kept there and dumps it all out. Whip doesn't reply to any of the messages left on his phone. Whip is in the barn, which also stores his father's plane, old photos, and belongings from before his divorce. So he's astonished when Charlie calls him at the farm and tells him to see him after a doctor's appointment a few days from now. Whip agrees to the request and attends a meeting with Hugh Lang, a Chicago attorney who has been appointed by the pilot's union. Hugh explains that when Whip's blood was taken from him at the scene of the accident, it revealed he had cocaine in his system and a high blood alcohol content. The two tell Whip that Hugh will contest the results but that Whip might be charged with manslaughter, go to jail, and lose his pilot's license. Whip watches television in a hotel lobby. Whip later purchases 12-pack cases of beer and vodka. In the car, he consumes the vodka. When Whip pays Nicole a visit in her apartment, Fran, the landlord, is stopped from assaulting Nicole because she owes him money. Offers to let her stay with him because she has nowhere else to go and her car won't start. They enjoy a quiet evening together. Hugh and Whip go to the scene of the crash. Hugh is informed by Whip that he drank the night before the flight and used coke to get himself together before the flight. They meet Ellen Block, the NTSB's chief investigator. Hugh will push to add, act of God, to the list of possible causes. He wants Whip to abstain from drinking. Whip claims that he can stop. Hugh has scheduled a meeting with Avington Carr, the airline's owner. Avington Carr discusses the legal aspects of the plane crash and their stance with his attorneys, the boss of the union, Charlie, and Hugh. Carr is certain that Whip will be jailed. He wants to keep his company safe. Whip becomes irritated when Nicole talks to him about his excessive drinking. They share memories from their past. Nicole talks about how she received the camera and her sick mother. Talk about his dad, the farm, and the plane. After the Trina memorial service, Whip goes to church. Margaret and her son welcome him. He asks Margaret to pretend that it was just another day and that the previous night he had only had two beers. Margaret sobs knowing it's a lie and she cried. Nicole declines Whip's invitation to dinner because she has an on meeting. Whip is urged not to choose between her and the meeting. Whip accepts her invitation to join her, but he leaves early to stop by a restaurant's bar. He leaves after seeing an interview with his co-pilot Ken Evans on television. Whip meets Evan and his wife in the hospital to learn more about Evan's theory regarding the cause of the accident. Evan is upset at Whip for drinking and boarding the aircraft. His legs are broken, and he is unable to fly again. He invites Whip to join him in prayer and lets Jesus be the judge. Whip is found by Nicole in the barn as he exits the Cessna. In Jamaica, he wants to start again with her, but she is unable to. She claims he needs treatment. Whip claims he chooses to drink and is happy while being irate. Nicole worries that she will resume using. She requests assistance for Whip. Whip wants to help her clean up in Jamaica. Without saying goodbye, Nicole departs Whip and leaves a letter behind. Whip is angry at this. Before going to the NTSB hangar, Whip consumes orange juice and vodka. Hugh is pleased that a hearing will take place in 10 days and that it will focus on the plane's condition rather than Whip's health. He has succeeded in adding a divine act to the list of likely reasons. Two empty vodka bottles that were discovered in the garbage can are the only remaining issues. They could only be Trina's whips. Whip reacts cynically, feeling guilty about having three. Hugh and Whip have a disagreement. Hugh cannot attend the hearing while Whip is still in this condition. He requests that Charlie clean him up. Whip leaves the meeting. When visiting Deanna, Whip is intoxicated. 
She requests that he go. His son Will supports his mother and requests that he leave. Will screams that he has no idea who the heck he is. He issues a brief press release and requests that people leave his family alone. Whip goes to Charlie's residence in search of safety. Charlie is upset with him for his actions and has lost faith in Whip. Whip's wishes to recover and regain flight. Charlie is begged to allow him to stay there till the meeting. If Charlie remains sober, he consents. A day before the hearing, Whip and Charlie make their way to the hotel. Whip spend the night there with a security officer in front of his room. To help him get ready for the hearing tomorrow, Hugh hands him a file about the investigation. Whip has trouble falling asleep. He discovers that the door to the adjacent room is open. He looks at the refrigerator's booze bottles. He can rebuff their call for a brief period before finally grabbing a bottle of alcohol and leaving. Hugh and Charlie discover empty alcohol bottles in the adjacent room the morning of the hearing. Hugh is hoping to save the case. They contact Harling, who brings cocaine to straighten Whip out, at Whip's recommendation. They're successful at it. Before the hearing, Whip is furious with Charlie for teaching him how to lie his drinking. According to Ellen Block's analysis, the accident was brought on by technological issues. Whip swears under oath that he didn't drink before the accident or that day, and that he doesn't have an alcohol or drug issue. Whip's guilt emerges when Ellen Block mentions Katharina and her drinking behavior and inquires as to whether she drank during the journey. He admits to drinking the days leading up to, on the day of, and during the trip. He acknowledges his alcoholism. His ability to lie has run its course. Whips relates his tale in an awe group in federal prison. He is thankful to be clean and feels liberated for the first time in his life. Well, Whip's son, visits to Whip's prison cell to write an essay about his father, who is the most fascinating person he has never met. Thank you for watching. Click the subscribe button and notification bell to watch more videos like this.